Since we're still in the fallout of the NHL's trade deadline for 2021, I wanted to make yet another video talking about some controversial issues, because when it comes to the Vancouver Canucks, we had ourselves a radio hit from Elliot Friedman yesterday that was just plain and simple. It was huge. Uh, yeah, it was huge. There's so much stuff to talk about. And, you know, I'm not going to be in a position to go over every single little detail here, but just to go over the rundown. Tanner Pearson's contract, hey, that influenced the other contracts around the league. Jim Benning kind of making other teams shell out big money and big bucks to other players. Speaking about that, Benning, it looks like he's going to come back. And we also had some other stuff spoken about when it comes to Adam Gaudet, which is our topic today, why Adam Gaudet was traded. Now, it's kind of weird how these videos usually perform. For some reason, these ones actually get quite a lot of traction compared to the other ones. For example, I remember when Jonathan Dolan was traded to the San Jose Sharks. The video that we made about the trade was okay, but I mean, the one that talked about why he got traded and explaining the entire controversy, that one was big. So, for Adam Gaudet, because it's a meaty discussion, to have here. I wanted to make this video as well. And before we even get underway, thank you to those in the comments of the previous Canucks related video who commented Moto because you wanted a chance to be featured in this one. Stick around to the end of this Canucks video for a chance to be featured next time. But before we even get things underway, I wanted to say as well, Adam Gaudet's a good guy. You know, like the entire thing that happened with the protocols and the infection and all that it sucks, but hey, it happens. Anybody can get this if they're going about. I've had family members who have contracted the thing as well. And we do know that some people deal with this thing harsher than others do. So, you know, my thoughts, our thoughts in general, they just go out to everybody who has had to go through this. And just because you are patient zero, as long as you are following the protocols, which according to the article written by Patrick Johnston, appears the Godettes were, hey, it happens. It is what it is. It's not a reflection of Godette as a guy. It just happened. But the fact that it did happen is still a fact that is worth acknowledging. And it's something that even though I personally am not going to go out there and judge anybody for, there have been a lot of rumors and hearsay from around the NHL's media personnel that suggest that the contrary might have some form of relevance here. Now, I'm not going to say anything is set in stone. Nothing is real. Nothing is true. Nothing is any of that. It's just stuff that I'm reading, stuff that the insiders are saying, and different opinions that were brought about talking about Adam Gaudet. So let's go over chronologically how exactly everything went down. So after Adam Gaudet got traded to the Chicago Blackhawks in exchange for Matthew Highmar, I, like many Vancouver Canucks fans, were mostly questioning the return. Sure, Gaudet getting traded traded is one thing, but the return, Matthew Highmore, an older guy who isn't really as skilled offensively and who doesn't really do much defensively, but he does work hard. Yeah, quite a bad return in my opinion still, just judging from what Gaudet could be and what he has shown us in the past that could still become even better, you know, in the future. But like, regardless, not talking about the return here, just talking about the actual trade itself. We had ourselves some word from Ian McIntyre talking about how the Vancouver Canucks absolutely did not have any part of the infections that Gaudet had happened to him and his family. That did not play a single part in the actual trading process itself. An emphatic no. No is what he received when he asked if the infections and Godet's status had any part of the exit from an unyielding market. The Canucks had trade discussions on him as far back as last season, and they finally closed a deal. Now, this was a sentiment that a lot of people saw and were like, okay, well, I mean, Ian McIntyre has his sources, yes, but like, come on, who's going to go out there and admit that, oh yeah, we traded Godet because he had the thing. If he hadn't gotten the thing, maybe he would still be a part of the lineup. Here is the contradiction, because Matt Sakaris formerly of TSN 1040, quote tweeted this tweet here, and he said, he has been told the opposite, that there were resentful players and that management was upset with him. This was the final straw with a player that was already backsliding on the ice. So, the opposite opinion has made itself known into the public sphere now too, that, oh, there actually were people in the Canucks organization that did not want this guy around and they didn't like him because he was the guy who brought the thing over onto the team. Give it a few minutes, and all of a sudden we have the comments that Jim Benning made to the media talking about Gaudet. And honestly, these ones feel really weird to read out because I'm kind of like, yeah, that's really blunt. Like, Jim Benning, dude, never change. He's always going out there giving it out how he feels. To be quite honest, he says, we expected Gaudet to take another step this year. He's played all right for us, but after the season he had last year, we were expecting him to come in and take another step. We did not think he did that. At times, he felt like he wanted to play higher in the lineup than he was, and we felt like when we talked to him, it was about his two-way game. It was the right time for him to get a fresh start. We just felt like it was time for a change of scenery for him. 
bringing in Highmore. We like him, yada, yada, yada. They start talking about Highmore. I'm not talking about Highmore. Here I'm talking about the hockey gods. So we have different perspectives being brought up from different parts of Vancouver media. And that's not even talking about the Reddit comments and all the conspiracies saying, oh, Bo Horvat unfollowed got dead on Instagram and all that stuff. I'm not even going to go in that territory because that stuff did exist for a good part of yesterday and the days before that. But that is a lot more anecdotal than I want it to be, so we're not going to touch that here. But going back to that Elliot Friedman radio hit from yesterday that talked about Tanner Pearson and it talked about Benning and all that stuff, it kind of laid down his own opinions here. And Friedman said it very well. It's like a breakup. This is the kind of thing where there's a he said, she says this and that and all that. But usually when you have two parties talking about things in an argumentative kind of way, the truth usually lays somewhere in the middle. So for Adam Gaudet, what Elliot Friedman was talking about can be described in some of the tweets over here. Do I believe that the Canucks are furious at Gaudet? No, I don't really believe that. But do I think it's possible that some of the Canucks were upset with how all of this happened? Yes, that he does believe. What Friedman was saying on the radio hit is that he believes that different parts of these statements from different people were all kind of true at the same time. He noted how he felt that the Vancouver Canucks were in a spot where they kind of knew Gaudet would probably want a change of scenery if he wasn't given an extended role with the team. Now, that's not him saying that Gaudet requested a trade. It's just they understood that Gaudet, as a guy, wanted to be played a little bit more, but the team was in a position where they didn't want to give him that responsibility, and projectedly into the long-term future, they knew that if he was not going to get that chance, he probably would have preferred to go somewhere else. This, combined with the perceived static of his overall development for this season, probably does play a big part of it, because Friedman lays it on the line. Yeah, he's heard that Vancouver had conversations with Nashville for Gaudet, with Boston for Gaudet, and he doesn't doubt that there were other teams in the mix as well. Chicago was just one of the newer ones. But this thing with the virus, even though Ian McIntyre was in a spot where he was told the Vancouver Canucks had absolutely no thought of that thing in mind when they considered trading Gaudet, Friedman said on the radio hit that he believes that even though it might not have been the driving force, it was still a thing that happened and a thing that has to be thought about. Because if you had Adam Gaudet, he's a guy you've been disappointed with. Jim Benning said that he was disappointed with the development and how he hasn't taken a step forward this year like they wanted him to. If you have a guy like Adam Gaudet, who in the words of the GM is not progressing forward, and you have these conversations with other teams talking about him, and they want this guy and all that, and all of a sudden, boom, this thing happens with the pandemic, and you guys get infected, and things are done, and who even knows if there are some players on the team that are upset. The Bo Horvat unfollowing on Instagram thing was a big deal, but I don't really want to place too much value in that. Who knows if there are any other players or whatever. All of a sudden, it's a lot easier to go out there and start thinking about trading the guy a little bit more. Not strictly because of the infections with the team, but because of all the stuff from beforehand, plus the infections afterwards that kind of act, in my opinion, as the push over the edge that caused these conversations to go down. Now, again, just going back to the trade itself, do I like the trade? Absolutely not. That return is horrendous. But trading Gaudet in itself, in a vacuum, is something that I could honestly justify. It's just, you know, that return, man. That return. Imagine trading away Tyler Madden because you have Adam Gaudet in your system, and you believe that whatever it is Tyler Madden could become, you have in Gaudet. You trade away Madden, you trade away a second, you get Safoli back, you don't re-sign that guy because you run out of time. But you have Adam Gaudet, who was supposed to be one of the reasons you were even able to get Tyler Toffoli in the first place. And you trade him away for, what, the Jay Beagle replacement now? Dude, come on. Couldn't even squeeze out a pick for Gaudet? I know he was a fifth round pick himself, but still, you had an asset here that even if you decided to trade him last year, he would have gotten so much more back for your hockey team. So, the move itself, I mean, I can understand why they traded Gaudet, because, I mean, all the stuff they did talk about, hey, it is true that he has declined production-wise this season. A lot of it is, though, because he has just been straight-up unlucky this season, but, yeah, that's another thing. So, yeah, why they traded Gaudet? I guess we'll never know until a few years down the line when some of the Canucks on the team right now retire and give stories as to how exactly the team reacted to this overall outbreak and whether or not some of those feelings have intercepted in the trade conversations themselves. It doesn't justify the bad return, in my opinion, but at the end of the day, the conversations were still made. So talk to me in the comments what you think about Gaudet, the trade, why it happened. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Rolls 99. Adam Gaudet, man, still going to tune into his streams because I love seeing the guy play Warzone. And... Bye.